Hey guys, welcome to TST Garage. I'm Bart, and today in this video, I'll be showing you how to install the TST Industries brake light modulator on your bike. Now, a brake light modulator, sometimes called a strobe, sometimes called a brake light flasher, what it does is basically enables you to install some electronics on your bike so that when you press your brakes, the brake light flashes in some kind of pattern and alerts the drivers behind you that you will be stopping. Our particular brake light modulator comes pre-wired to a plug that interfaces with a sub-harness that we provide specific to your bike model that enables plug and play functionality with your bike. So that means that the installation is really fast and uh, you can do it yourself. Now the electronics inside, we do have the ability for you to program this unit to three different functions and then subsequently adjust the rate of the effect to your liking. Our first programmable mode is strobe alert. This mode will produce nine flashes and then stay solid for the duration of the brake engagement. Second one is intermittent pulser. Each cycle will flash 10 times and then pause. And then these cycles will repeat for the duration of the brake engagement. The last available option is pulser. And this one just basically provides continuous flashing for the duration of the brake engagement. Now we will show you how to install this. It's really simple. And then after the installation chunk, I will show you in detail how to get inside here, how to program the different modes and how to alter the rate of those different modes. We did think about the safety of such devices during the design phase. So we decided to design this in a way that it will be a pass through component in case you experience a failure on board here it will just pass through your normal brake function, which means you press your brake, your brake light lights up, there's just no effect. In case you do experience that failure, we do offer a warranty, so we have guys standing by in our support department that will take your call, email, Facebook message, whatever, and we'll get you replaced. And that's pretty much it. Now, I'm really excited to show you guys just how easy this is to put on and configure. So let's get started. So on the CBR 300R bike, we will be using the universal version of our brake light modulator. The universal version basically gives you a sub harness that is terminated in Sumitomo MTW 110 plugs. And you're giving the opposite plugs that are typically meant to be crimped onto wiring in a universal type setup. In this procedure, I will show you how to use nothing but one simple tool to just repin a couple connectors and get you that plug and play setup using this kit. So let's get started. We'll need to remove the shroud that lines the bottom side of this whole fender setup. To do this, I'll need to get rid of these two push fasteners. These are the rivet type where you press in the center and that unlocks it. Then we have two more here in these locations. They're slightly different. The center has to come up and away from the main body. And that is the means of unlocking that particular push fastener like this. Take the center up and then the rest comes out. Now we'll have to get under the cracks of this shroud I'll push the side shroud, this component, away from the center plane of the bike. This is a little cumbersome. This enables me to get under there and pull up. Also use a small screwdriver. Just need to get one corner of this shroud out and that makes everything else go smooth. Once the forward section is out, pull it and it just comes out. This gives us access to all this wiring here. So let's identify some stuff. There's a boot that needs to come up and away for the meantime. We'll replace it later. And then there's this wire that goes up and into this compartment. Now we don't have much light coming through here. What I'm gonna do is take off the passenger seat 
and I think that will give us a little bit more light coming through because there's a void here as you can see this should help us be able to see stuff better and also have access to manipulation of wires and things up here all right so this is the Sumitomo MTW 110 connected that I was talking about this will have to come out and this wire here is your running light wire that is terminated in a bullet connector we are gonna leave this where it is because we don't need to do anything with the running light wire this is a brake brake light modulator it only needs the ground wire which on this Honda is solid green and then the brake wire which is green with a yellow trace what we'll do is remove these crimped on terminals from the housing this is done by inserting small pin pick or tiny flathead screwdriver through the window here up above the terminal and pressing down I'll do that to both and then they come out and I just need to make sure that they are reset these tabs in here need to come up so that they ratchet themselves back in place when we push them into a connector housing pry up on the tab once it's in this configuration it's good to be inserted back into a plug housing now this is our universal sub harness that comes with your brake light modulator the four conductor plug mates with the plug on the main unit then you have this plug with the longer lock that is meant to interface with this plug that comes with this harness that is typically supposed to be crimped on something else but in this configuration we'll be able just to make use of these two wires with the terminals already on them in this plug interfacing with our sub harness here so like i said before the green on this particular bike is ground so we want to push that into position where we will be connecting into the black wire on our sub harness and then the green with the yellow is your brake light wire so that one will be pushed in to where the yellow wire is on our system so you're basically being left with this configuration here okay so if you look at our supplied plug with the lock window being on this side brake here ground here the center position left open plug this in here and now we have the opposite side to take care of that is this plug here so again we will need to remove these crimped on terminals from the housing and again I'm using a pick because that is the most comfortable tool to do this with you could do it with a small screwdriver that's all you have access to these are slightly more challenging because it's tough to press a smaller tab in a smaller space but I got them I'll show you guys again on the male crimps you have these smaller tabs now you'll need to reset them make sure they are pointing up and away from the flat portion of the terminal that will enable you to actually get them seated in this plug so this plug that is supplied with our universal kit 
interfaces with this connector on our sub harness. And again, we just need to take the appropriate wire and get it seated in the appropriate position. So green, solid green, goes where it'll interface with black. And then, oh, not a lot of slack here. This green with yellow trace will go in the opposite slot until it seats. There we go. Now we have it seated. I'll show you guys the detail here. So looking at it from the side where we have the long lock protruding, you have your green with yellow trace on the bottom, center empty and solid green on top. Now what I like to do is power up the bike, plug everything in, make sure I don't get too far ahead in this procedure before testing the system. And voila, we have function. So now the remainder of this procedure is really where to put your new brake light modulator housing. I think it fits really nicely up through here under the tail light. And that will give us nice features here to zip tie around and it'll get the wires down here, connectors, all the connections are gonna be made here under that shroud. So I'll hold this plug is rectangular. I'm gonna hold it with the longer length horizontally and get it between my tail light and the frame components back here. And if you manipulate it and have some patience, it really it goes through, there's no problem. You get it done, you just need some patience. Once that is done, I will just mate this plug one more time until it clicks. Then get my boot around all these unsealed connectors. You don't have to worry about this one. This one's sealed. It could live anywhere. All right, now we have all this stuff housed properly. Everything tucks away nice and neat here. I'm gonna grab the zip ties that came with the kit. And uh, as you can see here, there's a channel on our modulator body that fits with one of these wire ties. So that's what I'm gonna use to get it cinched down to a frame component so that it doesn't vibrate around. And we send you two of these zip ties. I think one is probably enough on this particular bike. This thing's not going anywhere. All right. Cut off the excess. Now we'll just get our shroud back in in the reverse order of disassembly. The aft section goes in into its mating configuration first. And then at this point, we just have to get this lip under all these plastics on the receiving parts. Just like that. And now we can replace all the push fasteners that we've taken out. And that's it. This is pretty much done. I'll replace the passenger seat. Give our system one more whirl before I approve it. All right, there we go. Job's done, bike's ready to ride. For mode selection and rate adjustment, we will need to get inside this capsule to access the electronics. These two Phillips head screws will need to be removed. What I like to do is unscrew them until they disengage from the receiving threads and leave them in the cap. Otherwise, it's pretty easy to lose them. If we pull them off with the cap, they are self-captive. All right, now we'll identify the parts here. This button is the mode selector and this potentiometer is your rate adjuster. Clockwise is faster, counterclockwise is slower. 
Let's first do our selection of modes. With the brake pressed, press the button once to toggle to the next available program. Now the brake does have to be pressed so that the unit powers up, otherwise you won't be able to make the selection. If you find that you've pressed the button, but the selection has not been changed, just do it again with the brake pressed. So now we will go on to the next program, press the brake once more, press the button once, and now you're in the next mode. Now we've switched twice, so pressing it one more time will return to the original mode that your unit arrived in. Now for rate adjustment, we'll be using the potentiometer. With the brake pressed, we can turn it clockwise to make it go faster, counterclockwise to decrease the rate. Now in brake alert, you will only have nine flashes to make your adjustment and then it'll stay solid. This one doesn't actually lend itself to really fast flashing at the top of the range. Bottom of the range is unusable. So I like to set it somewhere towards three quarters to maybe 80% clockwise. And that does it for me. Now if we change to the next one, this one is Pulsar. And this one just keeps on flashing, so I like to have it going pretty fast here. Choice is really up to you. If you want to explore the next mode, we have the intermittent pulsar. This one to me belongs somewhere close to the top of the range, makes it the most visible. But again, freedom means choice. The decision is ultimately up to you. Once you're done with your adjustment and you're where you want to be with all your modes and rates, replace the cap. Turn the screws back in, and it really is just that simple. Replace your brake light modulator in the space that you des decided to keep it, and you're good to go.